Listening to Law and Gospel Rumination Thursday, May the 25th in the year of our Lord 2023. I'm Pastor Tom Baker, and with me is Pastor Wes Reimnitz. Hello, Wes. Okay, well, I'm here. Okay, excellent. (laughs) By the way, tomorrow is open mic in the sense that you can send me an email and we'll respond to it. But uh, people still don't know my new email address, and it's the only one I have that you can get a hold of us. It's tombaker at brick.net, B-R-I-C-K dot net. And that's the one we want you to uh, write to if you have any questions or such. But today we've got a very interesting subject that Wes found for us. It's an email. Uh, sent from Morningstar News about Christian teens are charged with blasphemy in Pakistan, and that could result in their death penalty. Now, what I found interesting are the circumstances as to how they were charged with blasphemy in Pakistan. Could you explain that, please, Wes? Well, what happened was a uh, uh, man by the name of Misha, uh, who had uh, several sons, an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old, and he heard a commotion outside, and a policeman by the name of Sohail uh, stopped him, was beating on the son and, and another Christian boy, and said that they were engaged in blasphemy against uh, the Muslim faith of Muhammad. Because uh, a little background, back in January of this year, the, the government passed a blasphemy, blasphemy law uh, charge that could face death penalties, and this uh, policeman uh, accused him of committing blasphemy. And he's not a very light policeman because he's had circumstances like this before. Both boys fully denied his allegation and said that they had done nothing that involved a mention of the Muslim prophet. And when local elders of the neighbors asked Sohail to substantiate his accusation, He failed to satisfy them, and he left. But we were shocked to learn that the contents of the first information report in which Sohail alleged that Simon had called a puppy Muhammad Ali, and both boys had joked about it. So by referring to a puppy, the only problem was that there was no puppy in the neighborhood. There was no dog around. And therefore the boys had not really joked about it. But they were charged with blasphemy Muhammad, as you said, under section 295-C of Pakistan's blasphemy statutes. And that calls for the death penalty. So kind of harsh, kind of harsh, isn't it? Well, I would say so. <laughs> and nobody in the street had dogs. Neither was there a puppy in the street. But he cooked up a false accusation against those children after failing to convince the locals about his earlier allegation. So. We've got a situation where Christians in other countries, and this is Pakistan, can be put to death if they say something against the Muslim faith. 
And, and that's really? the kind of problems that Christians are having today. Yeah, I kind of selected this 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 article because it's going on in Sudan. There's 20 million people in Sudan, and about 2 million of them are Christians, and they're burning churches and murdering Christians in Sudan. In India, they're burning churches and murdering Christians. In Nigeria, they're burning churches and murdering Christians. It, it seems to be a real problem in these third world countries. So right now, the children are in prison, and they don't know how long those children will suffer in prison due to this false charge. So we're going to be kind of looking forward to that. But there's some statistics in this email. It says at least 57 cases of alleged blasphemy were reported in Pakistan this year alone, between January 1st and May 10th. And while four blasphemy suspects were lynched or killed during the same period, and this is from the Center for Social Justice and People's Commission for Minority Rights. The, the, the data show that eight incidents occurred in January, 17 cases in February, seven cases in March, another 19 cases in April, and so far in May, there are six cases totaling 57 accused individuals. Where was the highest number of blasphemy? Where did that come from? Well, that was uh, about 28 of those, and those were in the Punjab province, followed by the, the Sun province with 16, and the Khyber was eight, and uh, Azad and Kashmir with five. So. It, it seems to be a, a not an isolated case of these teens, but all across Pakistan, ever since they changed the law back in January, it, it's just a, a rise of so-called cases. Yes, there's a retired justice, Nasira Yavid Ikbi, and he's a patron in chief. What did he urge the government? Well, he, he wants to stop the misuse of uh, harsh laws. These blasphemy laws have been consistently misused to settle personal disputes, persecuted minority groups, and incite mob and violence and hatred. And this justice is a woman, but she says we demand prompt action against a collective effort by the government to address these human rights violations. And so this is something that's happening there, no doubt about it. Um, Musarat Bibi, she 45 years old, and Muhammad Samad worked at the Government Girls Higher Secretary School in a village and what happened on April the 15th to both workers? Well, it was interesting. They were told to clean the school storeroom that is filled with paper and other scrapped items. And the duel gathered the waste paper and other scraps and corners and set fire to them. And some st students later noticed that the burned items contained holy pages. Now, holy pages being evidently parts of copies of the Quran. Yes. And um, the, they were charged with breaking blasphemy by burning those pages. Even though they were told to clean up the room and get rid of the papers. And so whoever, the section 295B states this, this is the law. Whoever willfully defiles damages or desecrates a copy of the Quran or of an extract therefrom or uses it in any derogatory manner 
or for any unlawful purpose shall be punishable with what? What's their punishment? Well, punishable with imprisonment for life. Yes. You mean? You know, so, that, that, that brings up a question. Yes. What if, you know, it's electronically, you're on a computer and you run off a copy of of the pages of the Quran, and does that mean that it that it's got to stay around for forever? Yeah, yeah, it's a real problem that they're having there. In fact, according to Open Doors World Watch list of the most difficult places to be a Christian, Pakistan is ranked number seven. Last year, it was number eight. And so it's getting worse in Pakistan because of this new law. Can you, can you imagine having a law like that in the United States that yeah. we could not speak out against other religions? KFUO would yeah. have to be off the air because we're always speaking out against religions like the Muslim faith, and Jehovah Witnesses and Christian scientists and other religions that pretend to be Christian, but they are not. So we would yeah. be in real trouble if we lived in Pakistan. Yeah, well, it, it also brings to mind yesterday you were on the air and you talked about, uh, what was it, First Peter chapter 4? Yes. Something as, as a Christian. I mean, wouldn't this kind of fall into that, that these these Christians are entering suffering for, for the sake of Christ? Absolutely. And that's even happening, as you said, even in the United States, where there are churches, people have gone into a Roman Catholic church and really caused confusion during worship services, etc., and there have been broken windows in churches, even Lutheran churches in California, because people don't like hearing what God's word has to say, which leads us to another email you received from Robin Schumacher. And this was sent out May the 22nd. He talks about when he was driving to the gym in the morning, what had he heard on the radio? No. Oh. That's under mm -hmm. the morals of the reprobate mind. Oh, yeah. That, that's an interesting email, too. Uh, he had heard some, some uh, off-color comedy things and some letters asking for relationship advice. The cries for help were uh, over this Tom and Bob and Tom's radio program. And, uh, you know, there were letters coming in on, on how to handle family situations. Yeah, the one that I found interesting, it was this. I have been dating a guy from seeking arrangements for about a year. He's married, so I see him maybe two weekends a month. He recently found out that I have been occasionally dating other guys from the site, and he lost his mind. Isn't it crazy that a married man would demand loyalty, or am I the one who's out of line? And so how does Robin Shoemaker, how does he reply to that? <laughs> he goes, let's break it down. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but point to point, you know, those unaware seeking arrangements in a website, connection individuals, you had a sugar daddy mommy type situation. So the young woman might offer to be a fellow's girlfriend for a couple times a month if he agrees to pay the rent, you know. And he makes a very important point 
that that would actually be an act of prostitution. Yeah. And people just don't realize that. There, there's another letter they received. It says, I started having sex with a married co-worker. He cheated on me with other women. When I found out, I told him to tell me he was sorry because I don't deserve it. He could have just left me alone. He won't apologize. What do I do? I'm really upset about it. He's married, but not the only one in Georgia. So yeah. that this shows the reprimate mind that we have in the United States where this individual is having illicit relationships with a married coworker and then the married coworker cheats on him and he gets upset because he won't get an apology. Boy, this really shows how far people have strayed from the word of God. Haven't you often said it, some of its roots are in the foundation of the evolutionary theory? Yeah, I am really getting more and more convinced that this theory of evolution, which has no scientific basis whatsoever, that it is one in which people are making up their own laws. In fact, uh, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow about evolution, but one of the points it makes is if you believe in evolution, then you are free to do anything you want because there's no law telling you you can't. And so here's a man who's fooling around with someone who's already married, who cheats on him, and he gets angry, expecting an apology. It shows how far things are happening in this country. And that means that Christianity really has an opportunity to give a message. Yeah, well, here in the article, Robin Shoemaker brings up that uh, it's uh, saying that without God, all things are permitted. That it, There's been some um, surveys that I've read where they say, that it's down to 50% believe in God, that uh, we are a nation that's kind of leaving that behind as if God doesn't exist. Everything is possible then. Yes. But the problem is God does exist. And therefore, there is an objective morality that comes from a heavenly lawgiver. And we want sure fireproof that morals are absolute and everything is not permitted. And he makes a really good point about you take these same people that are cheerleaders of moral relativism, but what happens when certain things happen to them? What are the things well, that mean. happen to them? Well, they lie to, to, to them, they steal from them, they harm them physically or unfaithfully in a hurtful way. They immediately show how they believe their morals are absolute. It's kind of like, uh, I know I'm cheating on my wife, but I'm paying your rent, so you should be committed to me and only me. You know, how dare you? You know, the uh, truth is relative according to their own belief system. Well said. If you want to toss God out with his moral moorings out of your life, he says, go ahead. It's your funeral. And when you do, get ready for the rude awakening penned by humanist Paul Kurtz. He says, what does Paul Kurtz say? Well, if a man is a product of evolution, one species among others in a universe without purpose, and man's option is to live for himself, survival or survival of the fittest. Well said. Living for oneself 
is what the Bible says an unbeliever does. The unbeliever may do a lot of apparently good works, feeding the poor, housing those who don't have homes, dressing, giving clothes to those who need clothes, but he's doing it for himself. He's wanting to make himself look good in the eyes of others or look good to himself. And that is a sinful motivation. And the only thing around that is to trust in Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit moves you to do good works, but then you're not doing them for yourselves. You're doing them for faith in Jesus Christ. Um, what happened in Montana recently, uh, a proposal that uh, lost in court. Well, they, they had a reason a rejection of a proposal that required doctors to give life-saving treatment to babies born alive after a, a botched abortion. Some of these abortions that they do, the, the baby is still alive when it comes out. And it lost 53% to 47%. In other words, if a live baby is born, even during an abortion, the doctor has a permission to murder it after it's alive. Yeah. I've even seen where some politicians have said, well, we shouldn't really consider them a, a live baby until they go to the curbside to put them inside the car to, to drive them home. I mean, that's how bizarre some of this stuff gets. Yes, there, there are examples where certain babies are born with illnesses that the parents don't want to deal with, and they take the baby and put it into a, a section uh, for babies at the hospital and let them starve to death. You know, back in the Roman times, the Christians would go out to, to the uh, trash dumps and pick up babies that had been abandoned that, that that were missing a limb or they were somehow considered defective or it was a girl or something and they wanted sons. And the Christians would adopt those babies and bring them home and take care of them. Yes, this is why in your congregation, especially among faithful Christians, there's a lot of depression. Uh, according to Robin Shoemaker, he says, scroll through your favorite news sources and count how many stories are filled with all kinds of unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossipers, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. And even those who know the ordinance of God, they practice such things and are worthy of death. They not only do the same, but they give hearty approval to those who practice them and really put down Christians who are against these sinful lifestyles. Because it makes a difference uh, in, in that uh, we discuss this, uh, we are the salt of the earth and a light sit on a hill. We as Christians are called to stop this exhausting and depressing stuff that's going on. He quotes, he quotes Second Peter chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 13. What does he say? Well, according to his promises, we are looking for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So it becomes a, a, a time that all, all people, all your people will be righteous, all believers. So That's Isaiah chapter 60, verse 21. So... He ends his email, bring it, Lord, 
that can't come soon enough. No more crazy dear letters to the radio. So this man, Robin Shoemaker, is actually a software executive and a Christian who has written many articles and authored and contributed to several Christian books. In fact, one of his best books is entitled A Confident Faith, Winning People to Christ with the apologetics of the Apostle Paul. That's talking about using the Bible and saying the words and letting the Holy Spirit create faith. Well, once more, Pastor, thank you very much for these emails. And like he said, if you want to have us talk about a subject tomorrow, Tom Baker at brick.net. Uh, until then, I'm Pastor Tom Baker, Wes Reimnitz. God bless you. Listen to Law & Gospel each weekday morning at 9.30 on KFUO. For a tax-deductible gift to Law & Gospel, please make your check out to Law & Gospel and mail to Law & Gospel P.O. Box 28910, St. Louis, Missouri, 63132, or call toll-free 1-877-267-1962. Views and opinions expressed on Worldwide KFUO may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you'd like to comment on programs or topics heard on Worldwide KFUO, write us at KFUO, 1333 South Kirkwood Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63122. You can also leave a question or comment on our comment line at 314-996-1542. We are the messenger of good news, Worldwide KFUO.